Welcome, I am your host, and this is the Unanswered Questions Podcast. Hello everyone, and welcome to another episode of my new podcast, Unanswered Questions, where every week we will endeavour to discuss a mysterious unsolved case that has many lingering unanswered questions. So I hope you enjoy, and as always, leave me some feedback on what you think about the show, and rate it as well. Now on to the show. This week we'll be talking about the Cleveland Torso Murderer. So, the Kingsbury Run Torso Murderer, also known as the Mad Butcher of Kingsbury Run, was an unidentified serial killer who was active in Cleveland, Ohio in the United States in the 1930s. The killings were characterised by the dismemberment of 12 known victims and the disposal of their remains in the impoverished neighbourhood of Kingsbury Run. Most victims came from an area east of Kingsbury Run called the Roaring Third or Hobo Jungle, known for its bars, gambling dens, brothels and vagrants. Despite an investigation of the murders, which at one time was led by famed lawman Elliot Ness, then Cleveland's public safety director, the murderer was never apprehended. Now we're going to get into the murders. So, the official number of murders attributed to the Cleveland Torso Murderer is 12, although recent research has shown there could be as many is 20. The 12 known victims were killed between 1935 and 1938. Some investigators, including lead detective Peter Merlo, believe that there may have been 13 or more victims in the Cleveland, Youngstown and Pittsburgh area between the 1920s and 1950s. Two strong candidates for addition to the initial list of those killed are the unknown victim nicknamed Lady of the Lake, found on September 5th of 1934, and Robert Robertson, found on July 22nd of 1950. The victims of the Torso murderer were usually drifters whose identities were never determined determined, although there were a few exceptions to the rule. Victim numbers 2, 3, and 8 were identified as Edward Andrassy, Florence Polio, and possibly Rose Wallace, respectively. Edward Andrassy and Florence Polio were both identified by their fingerprints, while Rose Wallace was tentatively identified via her dental records. The victims appeared to be lower-class individuals, easy prey in Depression-era Cleveland. Many were known as working poor who'd nowhere else to live, but the ramshackle Depression-era shanty towns or Hoovervilles in the area known as the Cleveland Flat. The torso murderer always beheaded and dismembered their victims, occasionally severing the victim's torso in half or severing their appendages. In many cases, the cause of death was the decapitation or dismemberment itself. Most of the male victims were castrated. Some victims showed evidence of chemical treatment being applied to their bodies, which caused the skin to become red, tough, and leathery. Many of the victims were found after a considerable period of time following their deaths, occasionally in excess of a year. In an era when forensic science was largely in its infancy, these factors further complicated identification, especially since the heads were often undiscovered. During the time of the official murders, Elliot Ness held the position of Public Safety Director of Cleveland, a position with authority over the police department and ancillary services, including the fire department. While Ness had little to do with the investigation, his Pomotheus reputation as leader of the Untouchables had made him an irresistible character in modern torso murder law. Ness did contribute to the arrest and interrogation of one of the prime suspects, that being Dr. Francis E. Sweeney. In addition, he personally conducted raids into hobo shanties and eventually burned down Kingsbury Run, from which the killer took their victims. His reasoning for burning down the shanty towns was to catalogue fingerprints to easily identify any new victims and stated that it was also done to get possible victims out of the area in an attempt to stop the murders. Four days after the shanty town burning on August 22nd of 1938, Ness launched an equally draconian operation of questionable legality where he personally dispatched two six-man search teams on a large area of Cleveland stretching from the Cheyagawa River to E 55th Street to Prospect Avenue under the guise of conducting city fire inspections. This area of the city had long been supposed as the location of the Torso Murderer's laboratory. Among the detectives dispatched and charged to look for signs of the Torso Murderer's activity in the area were detectives Orly May, Emil Mussel, Peter Merlo, and Martin Zelski, men who had worked the case from the beginning and must have felt the frustrations of the case most strongly. While the search never turned up any new or incriminating information that could lead to the arrest and conviction of the torso murderer, the systemic search did serve to focus renewed public attention on the terrible living conditions in the downtown Cleveland area. The teams uncovered hundreds of families living in appalling fire traps without toilets or running water. The interest of social reform did ultimately come to light, even if those of law enforcement did not. At one point in time, the killer taunted Ness by placing the remains of two victims in full view of a city hall office in City Hall. Now we're going to get into the victims, so I'm going to go through a list of the canonical victims and some non-canonical victims of the torso murderer. 
So most researchers consider there to be 12 victims, although some have counted as many as 20. New evidence suggests a woman dubbed the Lady of the Lake could be included. There was a second victim who was also considered to be a victim of the Torso Killer in 1950, named Robert Robertson, due to the fact that his head was also cut off. Only two victims are positively identified, the other 10 were 6 John Does and 4 Jane Does. The first victim found, second victim to be killed, was Edward Andrasee. His body was found on September 23rd of 1935 on the base of Jackass hill where East 49th Street dead ends into Kingbury Run. Andrus's head was discovered buried near the rest of his body. His body was found to be emasculated and only wearing socks. The autopsy report stated that his head was decapitated in the mid-cervical region with a fracture of the mid-cervical vertebrae. The coroner also noted that Andrus' had rope burns around his wrists. The cause of Andrus' death was decapitation, hemorrhage and shock. Edward Andrus' death was ruled a homicide. He was estimated to have been dead for two to three days. The second victim to be found first victim to be killed was John Doe number 1. He was found September 23rd of 1935 at Jackass Hill area of Kingsbury Run. The body was found by James Wagner and Peter Costoa. A male body was never identified, emasculated and decapitated. The head was recovered. The skin was treated with a chemical agent that it caused to become reddish and leathery. He had been dead. Initial estimates were 7 to 10 days. It was later revised to about 3 to 4 weeks. The third victim to be found, third to be killed, was Florence Genevieve Polio, aliases Sordi, Sordini, Ghent, Martin, Gallagher, Davis, Clara Dunn and Clara Martin. She was found both on January 26th and February 7th of 1936 between between 2315 and 2325 East 20th Street in downtown Cleveland and 1419 Orange Avenue, Florence. Florence Polio's body was discovered at 2315 to 2325 East 20th Street in Cleveland, Ohio. Florence was found dismembered and had been wrapped with paper and packaged into half bushel packets. However, her head was never discovered. Florence was approximately 43 years old and weighed about 150 pounds. The autopsy report states that her cause of death was slit throat, but it was questioned that if it was a homicide, side because the head was never discovered. It was estimated that she had been dead for two to four days. The fourth victim found, fifth to be killed, was John Doe number two, nicknamed the Tattooed Man. He was found on June 5th of 1935 in Kingsbury Run. John Doe two, known as the Tattooed Man's body, was discovered in front of the Nickel Plate Railroad Police Building, while his head was discovered near the East 55th Street Bridge. John Doe had six tattoos, hence the name the Tattooed Man. The autopsy report stated that the body was drained of blood as well as his head was severed while the victim was alive. He was dead for two days. The fifth victim to be found, fourth to be killed, was John Doe number three, who was found on the 22nd of July 1936 in Big Creek area of Brooklyn, west of Cleveland. The victim was dismembered while still alive. His head was recovered. This unidentified male body was the only known West Side victim. He was dead. It was guessed at approximately around four months. The sixth victim to be found, seventh to be murdered, was John Doe four. He was found on September 10th of 1936 near a creek in Kingsbury Run. Two halves of a male torso and lower legs were found. The coroner noted notes the body was severed between the third and fourth cervical vertebrae as well as the third and fourth lumbar vertebrae. The head was never found nor the body identified. The victim's kidneys and stomach were cut and he was emasculated as well. The coroner declared the probable cause of death was decapitation. He was dead for two days. The seventh victim to be found, eighth to be murdered, was possible Jane Doe number one. She was found February 23rd of 1937 at Elucid Beach on the Lake Erie shore. The unidentified female body was found at the same spot as the 1934 non-canonical victim victim nicknamed the Lady of the Lake. The head was never found. The upper extremities are disarticulated at the level of the glenoid fossa, better known as the socket of the shoulder joint. The neck and head are disarticulated between the seventh cervical and first thoracic vertebrae. Multiple hesitation knife marks at the surface of the skin were present. There was considerable water and gravel found in both pural cavities. Though previously listed anatomical discoveries and diagnosis are made, the probable cause of death is officially determined via the coroner's case file. She was dead for three to four days. The eighth victim to be found, sixth to be killed, was Jane Doe number two. She was found June 6th of 1937 beneath the Lorraine Carnage Bridge. She was the only black victim, thought to be Rose Wallace, but never truly identified. The body was decapitated and missing a rib. The head was recovered. From the head, they found distinct dental work done with her teeth, but they were still never able to possibly identify her. She was dead for a whole year. The ninth victim found, ninth victim murdered, was John Doe number five. He was found July 6th of 1937. He was pulled out of Chugger 
Cuyahoga River in the Cleveland Flats body. This male was recovered, but the head was never found. The unidentified man had his abdomen gutted and his heart ripped out. He was dead for two to three days. The 10th victim found, 12th victim murdered, was Jane Doe number three. She was found April 8th of 1938 in the same Chaguar River in the Cleveland Flats on April 8th. Only the victim's lower leg was recovered. On May 2nd, a human thigh was discovered floating in the river to the east of the West 3rd Street Bridge. A police search under the bridge found a burlap sack containing the victim's headless torso cut into two halves, another thigh, and a left foot. The head and the rest of the body were never found. Only victim to have drugs, morphine in her system, and the amount of morphine was estimated at 0.002 grams per 100 gram sample. She had been dead for three to five days. The 11th victim found, 11th victim killed. She was found on August 16th of 1938 on East 9th Street, Lakeshore Dump. The dead body was around 800 feet east on Shore Drive of East 9th Street. She was decapitated. Her head was recovered. Her head disarticulated at the level of the third invertebrate disc. Autopsy was performed by S.R. Gerber, M.D., coroner of Chagua County. Lead detective Peter Merler would later in his memoirs dismiss Jane Doe 5 as the victim of the torso murderer due to evidence of embalming found on the remains. No other canonical victim's remains had shown traces of embalming. She had been dead four to six months. The twelfth and final victim to be found, tenth victim to be killed, was Jane Doe 6. She was found August 16th, 1938, East 9th Street, Lakeshore Dump. Exact location is 900 feet east of E 9th Street and 50th south of Lake Road. Jane Doe 6's body was discovered on the lakefront in plain view of safety director Elliot Ness's office with Jane Doe 4. It was previously mentioned that the head of Jane Doe 6 was discovered in a can, however there has been no evidence or reports on it. Similar to the other victims, the head was severed from the body and the victim today still remains unidentified. The head was disarticulated at the level of the third intervertebrae disc and had knife marks on the dorsum of the second and third cervical vertebrae. Extremities at all the major joints were all disarticulated as well. The coroner ruled the cause of death is undetermined, though he noted it was possibly a homicide. He had been dead for seven to nine months. Edward Andrestry was buried in St. Mary Cemetery, Cleveland, Ohio. Florence Polio was buried in Pennsylvania. Five of the Jane Doe's, Lady of the Lake, and victims John Doe 1, John Doe 2, John Doe 4, Jane Doe 1, were buried in Pottersfield section of Highland Park Cemetery, Highland Park, Chagua County, Ohio. Now we come to the possible victims. So there were several non-canonical victims that are commonly discussed in connection with the torso murder. The first was nicknamed the Lady of the Lake and was found near Ulysses Beach on the Lake Erie shore on the 5th of September 1934. Only parts of her were found and matched parts found at another shore in Perry. She had an indomitable scar from a likely uterus removal which was common and it made it more difficult to identify her. After she was found people began reporting seeing body parts in the river including a group of fishermen who believed to have seen the head. She was found virtually the same spot as canonical victim number seven. Some researchers of the torso murderers victims count the lady of the lake as victim number one or victim zero. Like the lady of the lake a year later John Doe one when his body was found however at the time the similarities were not connected. The chemical was believed to have been a substance using lime chloride. It is supposed that the killer meant to use a quickening lime to decompose the bodies quicker but mistakenly used lime that would preserve bodies instead. The headless body of an unidentified male was found in a boxcar in Newcastle Pennsylvania on July 1st of 1936. Three headless victims were found in boxcars near McKees Rocks Pennsylvania on the May 3rd of 1940. All bore similar injuries to those inflicted by the Cleveland killer. Dismembered bodies were also found in the swamps near Newcastle between the years 1921 and 1934 and between 1939 and 1942. In September 1940, an article in the Newcastle News refers to the killer as the murder swamp killer. The almost identical similarities between the victims in Newcastle to those in Cleveland, Ohio, coupled with the similarities between Newcastle's murder swamp and Cleveland's Kingberry Run, both of which were directly connected by a Baltimore and Ohio railroad line, were enough to convince Cleveland detective Peter Merlot that the Newcastle murders were the work of the mad butcher of Kingsbury Run. Merlot was convinced the connection was that the railroad ran twice a day between the two cities. He often rode the rails undercover looking for clues to the killer's identity. On July 22nd of 1950, the body of 41-year-old Robert Robertson was found at a business at 2138 Davenport Avenue in Cleveland. Police believed he'd been dead six to eight weeks and appeared to have been intentionally decapitated. His death appeared to fit the profile of other victims. He was estranged from his family, had an arrest record and a drinking problem, and was on the fringes of society. Despite widespread newspaper coverage linking the murders to the crimes in the 1930s, detectives investigating Roberts's death treated it as an isolated crime. In 1939, the torso killer claimed to have killed a victim in Los Angeles, California, and investigation uncovered animal bones. In addition to the murders in Cleveland, it is also suspected
suspected that there are connected murders before and after in Sandusky and Youngstown, as well as Noose Castle PA and Selkirk and Y. If they are connected, this would raise the body count and raise more questions about travel ability. It would also create a longer timeline of murders and victims over the span of the years. In a time when most major travel was still by railway and Cleveland being a major hub between some of those cities, it would be much more difficult to find viable suspects. Elliot Ness, who became famous for being part of the Untouchables and who took down Al Capone due to tax evasion, was also a safety director at the time of the murders that occurred in the Cleveland area from 1935 to 1938. Though he had the oversight of the police department, he was only periphery involved in the investigation. Ness interrogated one of the prime suspects of the murders, Dr. Francis E. Sweeney, using a polygraph test. At one point in time, two bodies of the victims of the serial killer were placed within view of his office window. Elliot Ness officially took charge of the so-called Torso murderer case on the 12th of September 1936 as public concern, press scrutiny, and political pressure grew. Elliot Ness and a group of 35 police officers and detectives raided the hobo's jungle of the run. 11 SWAT cars, two police vans, and three fire trucks descended on the largest cluster of makeshift shacks where the Chugia River twists around Public Square. Ness's raiders worked their way south through the run, eventually gathering up to 63 men. At dawn, police and firemen searched the deserted shanties for clues. Then, on orders from safety director Ness, the shacks were set on fire and burned to the ground. The press severely criticised Ness for his actions. The public was afraid and frustrated. Critics said the raid would do nothing to solve the murders, and they were right. But for whatever reason, they did stop. Another interesting point to note was that in 1947, the same year Ness unsuccessfully ran for mayor of Cleveland, a woman later identified as Elizabeth Short was murdered in Lee Mert Park in Los Angeles. Short was cut in half, her intestines were removed, and she was drained of her blood. All similar hallmarks to the Torso murders. She became known as the Black Dahlia, and her murder has one more thing in common with the Torso murders. It remains unsolved. So now we come to the suspects in this case. So authorities interrogated around 9,100 people during the investigation to find the Torso murderer. Though the case became the biggest police investigation in Cleveland history and many were investigated, there were only two main suspects of the Torso murderers, that being Frank Dozel and Francis E. Sweeney. So County Sheriff Martin O'Donnell arrested 52-year-old Bohemian bricklayer Frank Dozel for the murder of Flo Polio. Dozel had lived with her for a while and subsequent investigations revealed he had been acquainted with Edward Andrusy and Rose Wallace. His confession turned out to be a bewildering blend of incoherent ramblings and neat, precise details, almost as if he had been coached. Before he could go to trial, Dozel was found dead in his cell. The 5'8 Dozel had hanged himself from a hook only 5 feet 7 inches off the floor. Gerbert's autopsy revealed six broken ribs, all of which had been obtained while in the sheriff's custody. To this day, no one thinks Frank Dozel was the torso killer. The question is, why did Sheriff O'Donnell... Most investigators considered the last canonical murder to have been in 1938. One suspected individual was Dr. Francis E. Sweeney. Born May 5th of 1894, Sweeney was a veteran of World War I who was part of a medical unit that conducted amputations in the field. After the war, Sweeney became an alcoholic due to pathological anxiety and depression deprived from his wartime experiences. Sweeney was also later personally interviewed by Elliot Ness, who oversaw the official investigation into the killings in his capacity as Cleveland's safety director. Before the interrogation, Sweeney was detained and he was found to be so intoxicated that he was held in a hotel room for three days until he sobered up. During this investigation, Sweeney is said to have failed to pass two very early polygraph machine tests. Both tests were administered by polygraph expert Leonard Keeler, who told Ness he had his man. Ness apparently felt there was little chance of obtaining a successful prosecution of the doctor, especially as he was the first cousin of one of Ness's political opponents, Congressman Martin L. Sweeney, who'd hounded Ness publicly about his failure to catch the killer. After Sweeney committed himself, there were no no more leads or connections that police could assign to him as a possible suspect. From his hospital confinement, Sweeney sent threatening postcards and harassed Ness and his family into the 1950s, and the postcards only stopped arriving after his death. Sweeney died in a veterans hospital in Dayton on July 9th of 1964. Sweeney was a viable suspect, but the evidence was circumstantial and would have no bearing. He had a doctor's office on the street where a man named Amel Fronix said a doctor tried to drug him in 1934. His story was discounted as he could not relocate the building with the police the next day. Upon finding the victims with drugs in her system and looking through buildings, it was found that Sweeney did have an office next to a coroner in the area where Fronick had suggested he had been drugged. In 1997, another theory postulated that there may have been no single butcher of Kingsbury Run because the murders could have been committed by different people. This was based on the assumption that the autopsy results were inconclusive. First, Chilgoya County Coroner Arthur J. Pierce may have been inconsistent in his analysis as to whether the cuts on the bodies were expert or slapdash. Second, his successor, Samuel 
Daniel Gerber, who began to enjoy press attention for his involvement in cases such as the Sam Shepard murder trial, garnered a reputation for sensational theories. Therefore, the only thing known for certain was all the murder victims were dismembered. Elliot Ness was said to have taken the identity of the killer's name to his grave. With that, this case remains open, but with many unanswered questions that still remain unanswered. I'm your host, and this has been the Unanswered Questions Podcast. Until next time. Next on Unanswered Questions. Hell.com is an internet domain which has achieved a degree of notoriety due to its name and an intentionally mysterious website that existed there from August 1995 to 2009, created by the first registrant of the domain, artist Kenneth Aronson. 